How are we doing everyone? Sam here, United People's TV. As you can see, we've got a guest, Statman Dave. That man, Statman Dave. He's I'm the Statman. Stat I, I, I don't know why I've had to do that, but I have. So we're here to do a few videos. We're going to be talking numero uno about Manchester United and defensive midfield options. Numero do. I don't know why I've switched languages, okay. but like we're it. talking about options instead of Ivan Perisic because lots of you guys have been asking who are we going to get if we don't get Ivan Perisic. Mm. And one final video looking at what Man United's potential formation could be next season and what would be the best formation to use. But we'll get straight into it and start talking about defensive midfield options. We've been linked with Fabinho, Nemanja Matic, Eric Dyer, Julian Weigl, Marco Verratti. Too Steve many, from round the corner, you know, all many, the guys. Too many players, but who would be the best option? So what I'm going to speak to Dave about, find out a little bit more about which midfielder is actually suited to Manchester mm. United. Who would be the best signing Let's go. So the midfielder we've been linked with the most this summer, absolutely Fabinho from Monaco. Not really sure why Man United haven't signed him already if we were actually going to sign yeah. him because he is available but Mourinho hasn't moved. What, what's your take on him? Is he, is he the midfielder that can solve our problems? I think he's a, he's a real interesting one. You know, there was big talk about Bakayoko versus Fabinho. I think that was a big debate that was raging all season. A lot of United fans thinking Bakayoko is the answer. Fabinho is the answer. Obviously, this Bakayoko, more of a box to box, more a little bit more like Paul Pogba. Different attributes, more aggressive, more tenacious in the tackle. Obviously, going to Chelsea. Fabinho is the guy that could sit next to Paul Pogba. Mm -hmm. And I think, arguably, in the midfield, if you want to play, let's say, a 4 2 3 1, or you want to play a 4 3 3 or a 3 5 2, any of those situations, you need a holding midfielder. Yeah. And Fabinho is that guy. I'd rank him probably number two behind Casemiro in terms of Champions League last season, in terms of the best DMs. In the whole, in the whole of European football, you say Fabinho is number two Number two Casemiro. for me. I mean, that's, that's high praise indeed, but you know, why do you think then that Man United haven't moved for him? Because he is available for around 45 million euros is roughly the price, mm. but Man United haven't moved for him. We didn't move for Bakayoko. Whether or not we were ever in for him yeah. is it a different game altogether, but why, why haven't we already signed Fabinho? I think it, it could be an interesting one. You know, obviously, he was on, on holiday. I think mm. that's a big thing. He was off on the 1st of July, so he's only, you he, he think he had two weeks off, so 14th back. Again, with Monaco selling, they've already sold Bernardo Silva, they've already sold Bakayoko. Yeah. Do they really need to sell Fabinho? Mm. Do they need to make that? They absolutely don't. You know, they've got Yuri Tilsman in. Yuri Tilsman and Fabinho, again, would be a perfect partnership of a DM that could destroy, and then Tilsman, who hopefully one day may play at Manchester United, a yeah, great a creative midfielder. So they don't necessarily need to sell. Mourinho needs a defensive midfielder. We all know that. Yeah. And Herrera could do a job against the weaker side. We want to play with the ball, we want to play forward, but he's not Fabinho. In terms of tackles in the Champions yeah. League this season, only Casemiro, Vidal and Dani Alves make one more tackles. In terms of interceptions for Monaco, Champions League again, Bakayoko is the only guy to win more. Mm. But it's that ability to cover the flanks. Obviously a fullback um, in previous parts of his career, very comfortable yeah. at covering you know, the likes of Sidibe and Lamar pushing on. As United do need to attack their fullbacks, we know that. Yeah. He'll be a key cog and for me that's why United should have already bought him, they should already have him on the tour. They mm. haven't moved and it seems to be, you know, they're wasting time. I mean, that, there must be a reason for that. Whether or not that is someone like Nemanja Matic we're going mm. for instead or whether Mourinho has just been locked in negotiations for Morata and then Lukaku and hasn't been able to go and get Fabinho, but you'd like to think they could deal with more than one thing yeah. at once. But <laughs> is Fabinho the defensive midfielder that you want to see? It's definitely the one I wanted to see until a certain Marco Verratti switched agents, <laughs> but then we'll talk about him later on. But is he still the defensive midfielder you want to know? Let us know in the comments. Next up, Nemanja Matic. So Nemanja Matic, he was the midfielder that Mourinho brought back to Chelsea from Benfica. He obviously trusts him. He obviously yeah. likes him. He was incredible in that first season back. Uh, yeah. he's kind of, I wouldn't say he's gone downhill, but that was his best season back at Chelsea. In the two years previous, especially since Kante's arrival, mm. he's, he's been switching positions. He can play defensive mid, but he's also been pushed up into yeah. a left central midfield position. Can Matic refine that 2014 form, do you think, at Man United? 100% if he's playing under Mourinho, the same guy. Mm. Playing with a similar midfielder next to him, potentially, if he was partnered with Paul Pogba. Thinking Cesc Fabregas that year was ridiculous. Got 19 assists in the Premier League. That was up until December, wasn't it? And then he just exactly, went off. Exactly, just went it. off the boil. You know, was so mm. close to getting that record. If Pogba needs, Pogba basically needs someone to free him if he's playing in a two. Yeah. And again, Nemanja Matic has that ability to destroy, to break up, to... He's almost two midfielders in one. You know, your recycle of possession, of simple in possession, will shift it to you. More creative players but also that destroyer he won 128 tackles that season that Chelsea went on to win wow. the league that's still ranked in the top five tacklers in the last five seasons so you think Kante's blown it away Jesse Guy's blown it away in recent years mm. as well as Jednak 
who's a midfielder. Really? Who, yeah, it's one of those players that, again, is playing championship football. Mm. Shouldn't be playing championship football. I think he's a bit better than that. But he, but that Matic record is still there. He was so explosive, so tenacious. There were battles with Yaya Torre, where Yaya Torre arguably at that time was at its peak. You think him, uh, he joined in the 2013-14, I think in the January yeah. there, then the after, season after Chelsea won the league. But he had two battles with Yaya Torre where he destroyed him. Wasn't that, that game there was a 1-0 at the Etihad where it was just Chelsea controlled it? Controlled it, it and it was Matic in midfield. Mm. And I think that's a big thing that you'll get from Nemanja Matic. It's not necessarily that you know, he's going to run the game. Yeah. He's playing a role, he's a water carrier. And but, again, you but, go back to Chelsea, which yeah. you were saying before, his roles had to be a little bit more you know, sitting instead of being like Kante aggressive. There, there's been a, a bit of a mixed reaction to all the Matic rumours mm. that have come out. There's been a lot of fans that have said... Matic, they felt underwhelmed by the prospect of Matic being that defensive midfielder. Do you think that's a bit unfair? Do you think yeah. do you think he is a better midfielder than people are giving on? And do you think that height is a big factor for Jose Mourinho because he's, he's bought big players? Matic, there aren't many bigger. Do you think he's trying to build that sort of presence in midfield alongside Paul Pogba as well? Which is why he would be more suited, suited to Mourinho rather than Fabinho. I think it's, it's power, it's aggression, mm. it's the height, as you mentioned. The thing that he's evolved this season is in terms of his assists. You know, he's got seven assists in the Premier League, which is more than any other United player. And he was playing pretty much central defensive midfielder in their 3-4-3. Three, three. Yeah, not bad. So it's not bad. But one of the big things, the facets that you've got to take from Matic's game, it's not just his defensive ability, it's from corners. Mm. United were awful from corners. In the, well, in the last like, five, three years, they've been awful. One thing that Matic has started to do, or did last season at Chelsea, create a number of goals, near post run, flick onto the back post. Mm. And that's something that United could use as an asset going forward. But again, it's that defensive ability that United want in their team that would uh, you know, improve the side. He could play, again, as a single pivot, as a double pivot. It just makes sense if you want to play Pogba, maybe as a right central midfielder in a 4-2-3-1. You've got Matic on that left-hand side, he'll play there left-footed, yeah. Pogba on the right-hand side. It opens up a number of passes. Again, Pogba's usually playing on that left, left-hand side. But if you think about the balls out to the left winger, instead of it being open face and playing onto it, you're playing it the other way. So if you're playing it with the inside of your foot, it's curling the other way. Right. So it's playing it forward. Okay. So if Pogba's on that right-hand side, he's playing forward. Matic is playing forward. So it's, I think it would impact United quite a lot. Uh, it's these little small things that you could play a left foot and a right foot in central midfield mm. that is often ignored. You sound like Louis van Gaal. I do, but Louis van Gaal was a good manager. <laughs> we'll end it on that. <laughs> Nemanja Matic is another option we've had. Next up, we're going to talk about Verratti, only because Mina Royola is now his agent and he wants to move somewhere. Will it be to Old Trafford? So next up on this dream of a list, we've got Verratti. Now... Up until the point where Minerayola became his agent, I wouldn't have even entertained the conversation. The thought. No, the even glory. the thought. Because for me, he is in that elite list of, you know, Vidal, mm. Cruz, Casemiro, maybe you could yep. put him in there as well. Modric. Verratti, Modric. The sort of player that for me could spearhead, because I don't personally think that Man United can have a title challenge unless we sign a top quality defensive midfielder. I think mm. we're going to get found out in that yeah. position. Now, out of Fabinho, Matic and Verratti, Verratti is the one for me that stands out, but yep. am I wrong in thinking that? Is, is Fabinho or Matic a better solution? Am I looking at a star, in, a name instead of yeah. the actual solution? I think it's more that you need that power. Again, it's classic Mourinho needs power in defensive midfield. Someone that we'll talk about a bit later won't fit because the same reason. Mm. What Verratti would be is, wouldn't be a defensive midfielder. He'd be a central midfielder. Again, going back to the Mina Raiola thing, you think of Mkhitaryan, um, Paul Pogba, Ibrahimovic, Romero, Romero. The list goes on and on and on of players that have joined that are his agent. So yeah. we can entertain the, the idea where he would fit in United as being a central midfielder. You're thinking in any of the systems that Mourinho is going to play a three-man midfield. Imagine Pogba, Verratti. Again, that DM solution isn't solved. Right. What Verratti could do if he was playing in DM, again, he's quite tenacious in the tackle. He's very good at distributing the ball. But I think it's the power that you'd lack, given that Paul Pogba isn't necessarily that good in a defensive sense in a three-man midfield. He's not going to be tracking back. You're probably mm. going to be playing someone next to him like Ander Herrera, who also likes to press. So I think with Verratti, it would be next to Pogba, not behind Pogba. Right, OK. But I don't think, it, you know, the, what he's done this season, he's been fantastic. You think about the Barcelona game, 
that they won at the home mm. tie. He was so dominant in that game. Think of how he used the ball in between the lines, how he pressed. The amount of times he found Daniel Di Maria. Di Maria that uh, game scored two goals, one from a free kick, one yeah. from open play. Again, Verratti was the guy that received it in midfield, played it in between the lines. Something United have failed to do is attack zone 14 outside the box. It's a zone that statistically is the best area to create chances for and create goals. You know, a very central area. United struggle to get there. It's very sideways. United are always going left to right because of yeah. Louis van Gaal. Again, it's Louis van Gaal's systematic football that's boring as anything we need to be more penetrative something that Verratti would instantly give you is yeah. that penetration we saw that against Barca in that first leg you've got to kind of think of maybe his mentality that second leg right didn't really show up as well as he did in that first leg oh, well, so I, don't think, still, I don't think anybody in the PSG the, no, no, that's what I mean no one yeah. did but you know, you've got to take that as something that he needs to develop so, it's so, got everything else so you think that from what United need as a purely holding midfielder Verratti isn't the best solution. I don't think so. I think Verratti is a perfect solution for central midfield, but not defensive midfield. There you go then. Not Verratti. Maybe Fabinho <laughs> or Matic. Or maybe Eric Dyer. So next up on the list is Eric Dyer. Man United, Tottenham Hotspur, transfers. Daniel Levy, 60 million. I don't know how much he would cost, but he would cost a lot of money. He's a, he's a good footballer. Yeah. For me, he's nowhere near the best footballer in that Spurs team. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he filled a role last season. He ended up playing centre-back quite a lot. Yeah. And I don't know whether he is the solution. And I haven't watched enough of Spurs, because Spurs played the best football in the Premier League yeah. last year for me. And how important was Eric Dyer, do you feel, to that in the defensive midfield role? And it's, can he be the solution? Or do United need to supplement Dyer with somebody else if we're going to solve again, our problems? I think, again, we're talking holding midfielders. Mm. Eric Dyer is one of the best in the league. But you think about the Victor Wanyama transfer. Mm. Not to Eric Dyer outside. Victor Wanyama, perfect for Mourinho. If United had bought, Eric, had bought Victor Wanyama last season, we wouldn't be talking about this we should We should have signed Dembele from Fulham because he dominated, <laughs> he dominated us at The weird thing, I, I was at that game and I was so impressed by Dembele that day and I was like, this guy, he's good. He's got, he's got, you know, he's, he's got some real ability on the ball. And what you, you never see at United is a player come to Old Trafford and dominate the midfield, yeah. the central midfield. If anyone does that, you sort of go, wait a minute, you know, he's one of the bunch, he's one of the Pirlo's, one of the Rui Costa's that have come to Old Trafford with these great sides and they dominate the midfield. And that's what it was. It was domination. But it, again... It was men against boys that I think, game. Was... I think now he's in a position where he's 30 years old. United shouldn't be going after mm. someone like Dembele. But Eric Dyer, back to the point, I think he reads the game very well. What he's very good is on the ball, playing forward. And arguably, he moved out um, Moussa Dembele towards the end of the season. He came in and partnered Victor Wanyama. And they played some really good football together. You think of the Arsenal game. Mm. Eric Dyer was fantastic. Won the ball in the centre of the park. I think it was for one of the goals a beautiful forward pass again speaking about those forward passes that's something that Eric Dyer has is a great quality of his is playing forward mm. something that Carrick's had Carrick obviously his tempo has gone down and I'd argue this, you know, that maybe it would, was time to move away from Carrick but yeah. New Deal fantastic leadership in the dressing whatever but it's that tempo the, the pass to play forward first and that's yeah. what Eric Dyer has he has that European mentality of looking forward before looking square and I'd argue that for a decent price, it would have been a good deal. But for 60 million, similar to the Murata, mm. similar to the Balotti situation, you you know, if you've got a Lukaku out there yeah. that's Premier League proven goal scorer, why would you sign Murata? Why would you sign Balotti? Yeah. Not Premier League proven, Murata's scored 15 goals once in his career, more than 10 once yeah. uh, in a league season. It's a similar situation there that there's no point in spending 60 million on Eric Dyer if you could get Matic, if you get Fabinho, if you get Verratti. Yeah, you know that's the problem. It's the price that pushes you down the list. Mm. I don't. I think he's a fantastic player, talented. Can play right back, centre back. You know, he's a Mourinho type player that you can move around. Powerful, strong, good on the ball. He's a perfect player, but unfortunately, his moves. He's been priced out the move by Daniel Levy. What are you doing, Mr. Levy? Anyway, that's Dyer. <laughs> There's only one name on the list because lots and lots of you have been leaving this name in the comments. <laughs> Vigel from Dortmund. So the last name on the list is Julian Weigel from Dortmund. The 21-year-old is a breakthrough prospect, but is he the Michael Carrick replacement? Is, is he good enough to do that? Is he strong enough to do that? Is he suited to Manchester United? Oh yeah, he's you know, one of the best ball-playing central midfielders in world football. I put him up there with Verratti in terms of how he can control games. Again, he isn't this destroyer. It's the same thing that Julian Weigel is probably a better central midfielder than he is a defensive midfielder. Yes, he's probably you know, one of the most like Carrick midfielders. You're thinking maybe Jorginho at Napoli, 
a similar mould, similar mm. Busquets role. You know, a player to control the tempo, a player to play in a possession-based side. And unfortunately for Manchester United, that isn't quite the right fit at the moment. So we need a destroyer, not a creator. We need a destroyer, not a creator in that position. I think we've got enough creators in the park. Mm. I think we've got enough people that can move the ball and whatever. What we need is someone to deal with that counter-attack. What Julian Weigl is so good at is, is you know, his timing of his interceptions, his, his tackles. But what he evolved this season is his passing range. You know, it was already fantastic. Now it's even better. You know, the Dortmund last season on the 2-4 played like a 3-4-2-1 uh, in a way. Yeah. Uh, and, and Weigl was so good at getting the wing-backs in. Again, if United go to a 3-5-2, having Julian Weigl to control the tempo and get the wing-backs in, perfect. Mm. The classic goal was central midfield, either Castro or Weigl, spray it wide, play it across, and then it's a tap-in for Aubameyang. It'd be perfect, absolutely perfect. The amount of times he's got over completing 100 passes in a game is countless. You know, so but many it, but, times it, but he's that. not that player that can sit behind Paul Pogba and get the most out of no. him, which for me is the main reason we need that holding midfielder. I think the Paul Pogba thing is an interesting one. I think Paul Pogba needs needs a ball playing centre half. I think that's a big thing to mm. find him between the lines, and we've got that in Lindelof. Yeah. We already saw that against um, LA Galaxy. You think of the, the move, the, the uh, Fossi Mensa down the line, yeah. cut across back. That all comes from pass. Lindelof taking the ball from Joel Pereira, playing it forward to Paul Pogba. Pogba spins his man, absolute wonderful ball, Amazing goal pass. time. But that all comes from a ball playing centre half. You think what was so impressive about Pogba on his last season at Juve was how he got into that final third and he was found by Benucci. Mm. And Lindelof is a similar character. I don't think you necessarily need a defensive midfielder to play to him behind him. I think you need a centre half. More than that, you need need to play the. Yeah, so I suppose it would be more a case of having that defensive midfielder to take the defensive responsibilities away yeah. from Pogba, so that when he receives the ball, he's he, he in the op- he's in the opposition exactly. half instead of being too deep that he's got to create for himself. You know, he can he can come deep, he can pick up the yeah. ball deep and go. But you don't you want Pogba closer to their goal. Right now, I think Pogba may eventually develop into a deep line playmaker, but right now, I think with what United want to go and how they want to create things, it's pushing Pogba further towards the opposition's goal, quite frankly. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it's a 3 5 2 or 4 3 3 or a 4 2 3 1, you want this defensive midfielder to allow Pogba to go away. So you basically need this DM to just be able to just play by himself, pretty much. Just to stay in that as sort of an anchor position, don't move much, just stay there yeah. and just. Don't get excited to run forward. One player that I just, I, I, it's like R- Ricardo Rodriguez, right? I've seen him play live like three times, and every right. single time he's been one of the best players. I've seen him from Switzerland, I've seen him play for Wolfsburg. Mm-hmm. And I've, it's weird how he's only just moved to AC Milan. Similar to that, William Carvalho. Why has his name not been mentioned? Uh, the, the, the man that, that David Moyes scouted, what, about 27 games in, in succession when he was at Sporting Lisbon? I, honestly, every time I watch him play football, I'm surprised really? that he, he doesn't play for Sporting Lisbon. He'd be the perfect guy to play with Pogba because he's powerful, he's aggressive, he can roll tackles, he can win the ball back, got a great passing range on him. Sort of gone off the ball because it was, it was, he was the man of the moment and then he went to the Euros it, and then he sort of crept into the team and then he, he, he was fantastic and, and in the then team. they won the Euros, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he was playing defensive midfield, yeah. a key position in there for uh, two, two fellas. They, they didn't the win diamond a game. they played, whatever. But again, it's I don't know whether it's the leg break that's turned people off mm. or whether it's the... You know, his form's been good for me. Yeah. I think he's been playing well. Um, you know, I think he's got the third most passes in the Portuguese league last season. But again, it's, it's weird that he seems to fit the bill of a Mourinho-type destroyer. Right. Yet, again, there's no movement there. I'd say I'd probably go Fabinho, Matic, so you're, and so slash Carvalho. So you're saying in, in terms of the all the... So we listed Fabinho, yeah. Matic, Verratti, Dyer, Weigl, and now Carvalho as well. Yeah. You would put still Fabinho as that number, number one choice. Number one. And you put Matic as number two. Yeah. So the first I watched Fabinho twice, and the first time he impressed me with his tenacity against Arsenal. Mm. Arsenal massive favourites in the game. You remember Monaco dumped them out of the Champions League. Yep. It was like a brick wall, Shame. absolute brick wall. A, f- a fellow that was playing fullback. That was one of his first appearances in central mm. midfield. Absolutely fantastic. Played next to Kondogbia. Kondogbia scored. Got the plaudits that day. It was all about Fabinho. Yeah. Saw him again uh, this season against, well, last season, sorry, against uh, Tottenham Hotspur, Champions League. What impressed me with his passing range. Playing at Tottenham high press, high octane, to complete 97% of your passes against a team that is so intense That's is a lot. just... It's a lot. Well, I don't know. I'm not a stat man. Even might as well go that is a lot You might, you might as well passes. go home. You know, that's his quality. And then we watched the dumping City out, the Champions League. Really enjoyed that. Top game. Um, you see him create two goals. Mm. You know, being clever, being smart, pressurising high up the pitch, intercepting the ball, crossing, bang, goal turn. The second one, a quick free kick. He just has a lot of facets of his game where he just seems to improve and improve and improve season on season. So it's kind of like, this is the guy that's perfect for me, personally. So does it confuse you, the fact that Mourinho hasn't already signed him? Or does it, does it tell you that Mourinho well, is looking elsewhere? He has, or say Woodward, rather than Mourinho, to be honest. Well, he's on the uh, Lions tour, is he not? I don't, know, I don't know where he is right now. He's but chilling out. 
Man United, <laughs> we all know that Man United need a defensive midfielder. As we've listed here, there's quite a few options. Statman Dave, he thinks Fabinho is the best option. I'm excited by the prospect. It's not even a prospect, it's just a little dream in my head of Verratti. <laughs> but Statman Dave has told me otherwise that he is more of a central midfielder instead of a holding midfielder. So maybe I'm going to go back to Fabinho. I, yeah, I'm not saying that Ver Verratti would be a fantastic signing. Of course I don't would. think it's the right answer right now. Well, if we're looking at specialist signings, which is what Mourinho likes yeah. to do, he needs a destroyer, a holding midfielder. And Fabinho, who's got a, a career history of playing at fullback and then moving into that defensive midfield, he's a defender. Absolutely, first and foremost. Yep. And that is what Man United need. As I've said today, there as well, somebody who can free Defense. up Paul Pogba. Oh, yeah. No, don't start, De don't start throwing gang signs. Defence. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to cut that bit. But for me, it's about finding that defensive midfielder who can free Paul Pogba up, which is a bit of a, a shame to say it like that, just to bring somebody else in, just to, just to free someone else. But when you've got Paul Pogba, you need to make the most of him. And when you've got Rob Lukaku up front, You've got to make the most of them. That's what Man United have to do this year. And to do that properly, I feel, to do a title challenge, we need a defensive midfield. But you do, do you agree with Dave that Fabinho is that man? Or would you like to see Mourinho sign Matic again? Maybe Verratti comes in. Maybe Dyer or Weigl. Or Carvalho. Curveball. What about all six of them? That's a lot of defensive midfielders. Why not? Going for a 3-6-1. That's 10, yeah. right? That is yeah, 10. yeah, I'll do, I'll do. Quick maths, quick maths. But let us know in the comments who you would rather see. Would you like Fabinho or do you think, as I said, Matic, is he the right choice? As always, drop a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV and head over to Statman Dave's channel. We'll leave a link in the description. Go and subscribe there as well. And make sure you check out the other two videos that we're going to be doing on alternatives to Ivan Perisic and Manchester United's formation next season. Take it easy. Bye.